All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation x to the power of 12 minus one is equal to zero. So to solve this, I'm gonna first rewrite this as x to the power of six to the power of two minus one squared is equal to zero. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can use the property a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So this turns into x to the power of six plus one times x to the power of six minus one is equal to zero. So this gives me two equations. I get x to the power of six plus one equals zero and x to the power of six minus one equals zero. Now I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna rewrite x to the power of six minus one equals zero as x to the power of three to the power of two minus one squared is equal to zero. <clears throat> so I can use this property again and get x to the power of three plus one times x to the power of three minus one is equal to zero. Now, for x to the power of three minus one equals zero, I can, I'm can i gonna rewrite this as x to the power of three minus one to the power of three equals zero, so I can use the property a to the power of three minus b to the power of three is equal to a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. So this turns into a minus b times a squared plus a plus one is equal to zero. Sorry, this turns into x minus one times x squared plus x plus one is equal to zero, which gives me yet another two equations. So now I have x minus one equals zero and x squared plus x plus one equals zero. So for x minus one equals zero, all I have to do is add one on both sides and I get x is equal to one. And for x squared plus x plus one equals zero, I can use the quadratic formula. So by using it, I get x is equal to negative one plus or minus the square root of three i over two. So these are two more solutions. And now we aren't done yet because we also have to solve these. So now I have x to the power of three plus one is equal to zero. And I'm gonna subtract one on both sides. So I get x to the power of three is equal to negative one meaning x is also equal to negative one. So this is another solution. Now for x to the power of six plus one equals zero, I'm gonna again subtract one on both sides. So I get x to the power of six is equal to negative one. And if I take the sixth root, I get x is equal to six root of negative one, which is equal to negative one to the power of one over six. So now, the sixth root of negative one is, say the, we know that I is equal to the square root of negative one, which is equal to negative one to the power of one half. So negative one to the power of one over six is the same thing as negative one to the power of one half minus something. So now one over six, or I should say one half minus one over six is equal to one over three. So one over six plus one over three is equal to one half. We know this, meaning we have negative one to the power of one over six And this plus, or sorry, I should, one over two minus one over three is what we can rewrite one over six as. Now, this is the same thing as one half plus negative one over three. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, 
this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So this is going to equal negative 1 to the power of 1 half times negative 1 to the power of negative 1 over 3. Negative 1 to the power of 1 half is the square root of negative 1, which is equal to i. So we get i times negative 1 to the power of negative 1 over 3, which is the same thing as 1 over negative 1 to the power of 1 over 3, which is equal to negative 1. So I get i times negative 1, which is equal to negative i, which is my final solution. All right, so in this video, I'm going to solve the equation 8 to the power of x is equal to 32. So to solve this, I'm going to start by taking the log on both sides. So I get log of 8 to the power of x is equal to log 32. And now if I have something in the form log of a to the power of b, I can move this x1 and b to the front of the logarithm. So this is turned into b times log a. So log a to the power of b is equal to b times log a. So now in the case of log 8 to the power of x, we can think of x as b, so we can move x to the front of the logarithm. So I get x times log of 8 is equal to log of 32. Now, from here, I'm going to divide both sides by log 8 because we want to isolate x because that's what we're trying to find the value of. So now these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to log of 32 over log of 8. Now, log of 32 is the same thing as log of 8 times 4. So I get log of 8 times 4 over log of 32. And if I have something in the form log of a times b, this is equal to log a plus log b. So in this case, this is going to equal log of 8 plus log of 4, and I have this over log of 32. Sorry, I have this over log of 8. Now, this turns into log 8 over log 8 plus log 4 over log 8. So now these two cancel out to get 1. So I get x is equal to 1 plus log of 4 over log of 8. Now, log of 4 is the same thing as log of 2 squared. And log of 8 is the same thing as log of 2 to the power of 3. So now if I have something in the form log of a to the power of b, again, I can move b to the front, so turn to b times log a. So that's exactly what I'm going to do with both of these. So I get x is equal to 1 plus, I can move the 2 to the front. So <clears throat> 2 times log 2 over the same thing with 3, so 3 times log 2. So now these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to 1 plus 2 over 3, which is equal to 1 is the same thing as 3 over 3, so 3 over 3 plus 2 over 3, which is 5 over 3. So x is 5 over 3. Now, how do we know that this is the right answer? So going back, we have a to the power of x equals 32. And we're plugging in 5 over 3. 
So we get eight to the power of five over three is equal to 32. Now, if you already know, eight is the same thing as two to the power of three. So I get two to the power of three to the power of five over three is equal to 33 is the same thing. 32 is the same thing as two to the power of five. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So these two threes cancel out and I get two to the power of five is equal to two to the power of five, or this is the same thing as 32 is equal to 32. This is right. Now, I also have a second method of solving this problem. So for the second method, we have the same equation, a to the power of x is equal to 32. And this is a simple method. So for this method, I'm actually just going to start by rewriting these two numbers. So 8, I'm going to rewrite as 2 to the power of 3. And 32, I'm going to rewrite as 2 to the power of 5. So I'm rewriting both of these as the same bases, which now it makes it much easier to solve. 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3x, which is equal to 2 to the power of 5. And because these two have the same bases, a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, meaning m is equal to n. So 3x is equal to 5, and x is equal to 5 over 3. So that's another method of solving this equation. Now, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and share this to any of your friends or family. Thank you.